Okay, I thought I'd uh, make another quick video, uh, last one looking at how to integrate x to the power i. Uh, so this one, kind of the opposite, I suppose, in, in one sense at least, where I'm integrating i to the power x. Um, again, the question is, what would you expect to happen, and can we actually prove why it does or why it does not? Um, so let's, let's see what we might kind of think might happen. Um, if we use the idea of um, how to integrate a to the x, uh, well, integral of a to the x is a to the x over ln a plus c. Uh, and you might know the kind of the e to the x, and that's the special case. So if you integral e to the x, it's e to the x over ln e. Uh, but obviously ln e is just 1. That is why the integral of e to the x just gives me e to the x. Okay, so you might therefore think, well, if, if complex numbers follow the same idea, then we're, we're going to get this result here. So i to the x is going to be i to the x over ln i plus c. So we'll see uh, if we can prove is that true, or if not true, then then, then what is the case. Um, for the rest of the video, uh, I'm not going to worry about the plus c. Uh, okay. So um, what we're going to start with is that we'd, we'd like to kind of uh, rewrite things in a different format. Um, so you can see I've got an i. I'd like to rewrite i. I'm going to use this uh, identity here, uh, e to the i theta equals cos theta plus i sine theta. Um, and, and one of the consequences of that is that i can be written as cos pi over 2 plus i sine uh, pi over 2. Uh, you can kind of understand that in terms of the, the argon diagram. There we go. That's a, it's a pi over 2 rotation. Uh, therefore, that's why theta is pi over 2. Anyway, so I've rewritten um, i is cos pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. Uh, therefore, if I'm doing i to the power x, I've got cos pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2 to the power x. I then use de Moivre's theorem. So basically, if I've got some complex number here to the power x, I can actually bring the x inside the angle like this. So this to the power x is exactly the same as cos pi x over 2 plus i sine pi x over 2. So all I've done is I've rewritten i to the x in term of cos and imaginary sine. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm integrating i to the x. So I can say it's the integral of cos pi x over 2 plus i sine pi x over 2. I can then split the integration. So I can integrate cos pi x over 2 dx plus i integral of sine pi x over 2. Uh, I then use my laws of integration. Cos integrates to sine. And I'm basically going to flip the fraction because when I differentiate sine pi x over 2, I'm going to bring the pi and the 2 and, and that would cancel out. So hopefully you're OK with this one. And equally, sine pi x over 2 is integrate to minus 2 over pi cos pi x over 2. And obviously, I'm times it by i. So I get this result here. OK, next thing, I'm going to take out pi over 2 as a factor. And I'm just going to rewrite it with the, the cos in front and then the sign afterwards. I haven't done anything else. I've just factorized out the pi over 2, just rearranged. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is actually uh, rewrite it so it's going to have a cos and an i sign uh, in this format here. So if I take out minus uh, i as a factor, minus i times this is going to give me the minus i cos of this thing, minus i times i, or i times i is minus 1, times by minus 1 would it give me this. So these two things are equivalent. And the reason I've written it like this is because uh, from, from early in the video, I'd already defined cos pi x over 2 plus i sine pi x over 2 as i to the power x. So there we go, I get a result for i to the x. To get i to the x dx is exactly the same as minus 2 i over pi times by i to the x. So I, I've, I've managed to do the integration. My question is now, well, is that the same? So I've, I've got this result here. I want to know, is this true? You know, is my rule actually holding or, or is this rule not holding here? So let's see if we can show if, if these things are the same or not. I'm going to use my same uh, result or idea as before, where i can be rewritten as cos pi over 2, i sine pi over 2. And it can also be written as e to the i 
pi over 2. So I'm going to use this uh, the, uh, e to the power kind of uh, equivalence here. So in this case, I'm going to see, well, what is ln i? So I want to see if these two things are the same. Well, what is ln i? Ln i, therefore, must be the same as ln e to the i pi over 2, because those two things are the same. Now I've written it like that. I can say, well, uh, again, using the fact that ln x and e to the x are inverse functions, well, I can use the laws of logs and bring this down, and ln and e, in effect, cancel out. So what I'm left with is i pi over 2. Okay, so ln e to the i pi over 2 is equal to i pi over 2. Okay, and then I'm saying, well, the other thing I want to see is like 1 over ln i. 1 over ln i is going to be 1 over i pi over 2. If I divide by a fraction, it's the same as flipping the fraction and times thing. So I get 2 over i pi get rid of the i on the bottom, times the top and bottom by i, so we get 2i over i times i times pi, i times i is negative 1, so that is the same as minus 2i over pi, which is what I wanted. So as before, I was trying to show that they're equivalent. Well, I have, I've just manipulated 1 over ln i, and I have got this result here, minus 2i over pi. So there we go, I've proved uh, that this rule still holds for this uh, example as well. So the integral of i to the x dx, I've shown that it's minus 2i over pi i x, and also shown that that is equivalent to i to the x over ln i. So my rule that I guessed at the start, uh, so you maybe say it wasn't unexpected, uh, but I still think it's kind of unexpected that it still works, uh, it still holds. So the integral of something to the power x, something to the power x over ln something still working even with complex numbers.